Sehr geehrte Damen und Herren, ich freue mich, Sie heute hier in Bonn zu begrüßen und ich finde es toll, dass ich der Erste bin, der auch ein paar Sätze in Deutsch redet. Ihr habt es gehört, mein Name ist Oliver Hunziker, ich bin Präsident der Schweizerischen Vereinigung für gemeinsame Elternschaft. Dieser Dachverband, der existiert seit 2008 und setzt sich seither für dieses Ziel ein. Mesdames, Messieurs, c'est un grand honneur pour moi d'être parmi vous tous aujourd'hui et d'avoir la, la chance de partager quelques idées et réflexions avec vous dans les prochaines minutes. Comme la langue de cette conférence est l'anglais, je vais bientôt continuer en anglais. Mais comme je suis suisse, c'est avec plaisir que je vous salue dans une des langues officielles de la Suisse. Bonsoir. Ladies and gentlemen, as you might know, this keynote was originally intended to be held by Ned Holstein, founder and chairman of the National Parents Organization in the United States. Unfortunately, Ned cannot attend this conference due to an accident. This is why I got the honor to speak to you today. At this point, I would like to wish Ned and his wife all the best in their sad situation at the moment. And I would also like to thank my colleagues for trusting in me. It was a challenge, but I love challenges. Since this is a keynote, you won't hear a lot of facts and figures from me. You will hear plenty of this in the following two days. Instead, I would like to share a few reflections and thoughts with you. They might be of a more general matter, but I hope that they will help to introduce you into the spirit of this event. Switzerland has just gone through some very important changes in family law in the last few days. Within the days between end of June and beginning of July, we have seen the activation of the new law for joint custody, the discussion in Parliament about the new law for child pensions, and a very large symposium on the future of families in Switzerland called the Future of Families. All of this has a lot to do with this event here. It has also a lot to do with the work our organizations are doing. 25 years ago, I was studying law for a little while. I didn't finish, that's why I say it like this. <laughs> we were learning there that the law is a very slow moving matter. Changes usually happen slowly. 15 to 20 years for a change would be absolutely average. Families, on the other hand, are highly dynamic constructions. Families start with the birth of the first child and in the terms we're interested in, they basically end with the majority age of the youngest child. In today's small families, this usually means a time period of 18 to 20 years. Studying law usually takes about four to six years. Becoming a lawyer takes somewhat longer. Becoming an experienced lawyer can take much longer. The situation is very similar for professionals in the social area or any other profession. Social workers, judges, Jugendamt Mitarbeiter and whatever other professions involved in family matters, they all start their career on a certain moment in time, but will only arrive in responsible positions many years later. Ladies and gentlemen, I am an IT professional. And if you know a little bit about this profession, you know that in my job, yesterday is some kind of an archaeological dimension. According to Moore's law, calculating power and storage capacity doubles each year. What used to be correct yesterday is old today and is Stone Age tomorrow. I give you another example of how time dimensions can be very different. When you try to explain the term tomorrow, to a child of, say, three years. Trying to explain that we will go to the playground tomorrow usually ends up with the crying child because the child thinks tomorrow is similar to never, ever at all. So you might wonder why I'm telling you this. But the answer is simple. Science is researching day by day. Every day we find new evidence, new knowledge, new results. Sometimes they're only, these are only precisions of already well-known things. Sometimes they are revolutionary new. Sometimes they even oppose fundamentally to current knowledge. 
Science is constantly moving permanently in the first line of social knowledge, sometimes even ahead. On the other side, we look at those people who use this knowledge in their daily work. Very often, as we heard before, these people have learned their job many years ago, long before new knowledge even appeared, maybe even was thought about. Our society is moving very fast these days. Things are changing rapidly. Even fundamental changes in the structure of our society are taking place. There are consequences for social rules that we cannot oversee at the moment. Role models, visions, but also social realities have a large impact on our thinking and acting every day. Family, in no matter what form, is considered to be the kernel of our society. Therefore, family is naturally affected by such changes immediately and heavily. Social, social stress fields between work and life, between career and family, family, between the need of earning money and the wish for self-realization, all this tucks and pulls on all members of a family. Today, young fathers want to involve themselves in the family, but the need to work for money stops them from doing so as well as the probably old-fashioned but still very active idea that men should work 100% or even more. Young mothers, on the other hand, would like to continue in their profession also after the birth of a child, but they get stopped by the lack of childcare institutions. Worse even, they often get pushed into a so-called housewife life by wrong signals by the law, not encouraging not encouraging them to search for other solutions. And of course, high above all these wishes of mothers and fathers, there are the needs of the children. Children need care, but they also need food and clothes, which means there is a need for money. Between the wishes of young fathers and mothers, the need of the children, and reality in courts and official offices, there is a large gap. Claim and reality often don't fit with each other. I'll give you an example. The Swiss law uh, on divorces was modified back in the year 2000. Unfortunately, there was a major error in this revision. I will come back on the details later on. Shortly after the new law was installed, this error was found. It was also recognized very soon that this is a major error, a central mistake, something we would call in IT a bug. But unlike Microsoft and others, the government does not issue updates and patches. Instead, it took us 14 years to eliminate this mistake. It has been eliminated by the new law that got active on July 1st this year. And you know what? All the lawyers involved are talking about the incredible speed of this revision. If we take, for an example, a child that was born in 1995, having its parents divorcing in 2001, this child would have been suffering from this major mistake almost all of his childhood. The correction in 2014 would not help him anymore due to the fact that the child is not a child anymore, but an adult. That's what lawyers call a speedy revision. So, let's assume that science usually is ahead of society. Well, at least I hope they are. Let's also assume that professions tend to stay with standard procedures, also known as best practices, but we could also call it conservative attitude, meaning that they might be in their daily work a little behind social developments due to further reasons. If these two assumptions are true, there is a gap. This time between the level of knowledge science has and the knowledge level used in day-to-day -day work with families. This would probably not be too important if it was in a different business, but in family business all those families that are in the middle of, of a difficult situation will end up deep down in exactly that gap. No other aspect of civil law affects us as deep as the family right. Maybe the bank secrecy in Switzerland, but that's another story. All of us are affected by family law. 
No matter whether we vote left or right in politics, no matter whether we are children, young adults, mothers and fathers, or even grandmothers and grandfathers, we are all concerned by family matters, or to say it simple, we are family. We are all sitting in this big gap between science and reality in one or the other world. Gaps like this usually lead to a reaction by the society. Gaps between rich and poor can lead to revolutions. Gaps between public law and society's vision lead to the founding of civil organizations who try to change the situation. I have the honor today to talk to you as a representative of such an organization. But let me explain why I came to this. Ten years ago, I had a personal experience with some curious aspects of the Swiss family law, the ones I told you before. At first, I thought this might be an individual error of a bunch of people, like the judge, like some lawyers. But soon after that, I had to realize that the mistake was by design, therefore happens everywhere and very often. A Swiss law that was changed back in, 20, in the year 2000 did not install joint custody or even joint authority as a standard. Instead, we had a possibility for joint authority through a common application by both parents. Without that application, parental authority and custody would usually go to the mother. Putting these two points together, it became almost immediately obvious that it would not work in many cases. If you need a common application from two people, but one of them has an almost guaranteed ticket to win, it will be very difficult to get to such a common application in case of trouble between the two people. Power plays or even extortion and other bad games would obviously happen just because they could happen. Together with many other colleagues and fellows, we have fought for a change in attitude, in social awareness, and finally in the law. This change has become real last week. The new law for joint parent authority, as I said, was installed on the 1st of July. When we started years ago, the gap between science and experts was rather small. Science usually confirmed the attitude of courts. Only society, in the society there was an increasing number of voices claiming that the situation was not correct, not compatible with social, social needs anymore due to changing realities in society. Scientists started to take note of this change. They began to research in different directions, finding a lot of evidence in all sorts of scientific areas pointing towards parenting, shared parenting. The attitude started to change, not because of lobbying or whatever, but because of scientific evidence that showed new results and new directions. But courts and other professional organizations did not pick up this change for a very, very long time. This is where the gap began, and that's where civil society started to play their role. But now, before all representatives of social professions leave the audience, let me point out clearly that everything I said should not be considered as an attack against people who are working in those positions. Of course, these people are not conservative or behind times. Of course, they know about changes in society. After all, they are a part of society. And of course, most of the people in these jobs are constantly learning and adapting new knowledge. But nevertheless, like in many other professions, day-to-day -day work tends to change very slowly. Often it is simply very difficult or even not possible to change well-approved workflows. Legal requirements may block a lot of positive changes as well. The range of possibilities to, have to, to deal might be very tight and leave no room for radical changes. So, although people might know about what should be done, they simply can't due to outside impacts. Therefore, the job for organizations like ours takes place on both ends, science and professions. On one side, we have to make sure that scientists know about the needs and the difficulties of the people they need to have questions in order to search for answers. 
On the other side, there's also a need on the executive side to explain the needs, show up the difficulties with the current situation and explain possible ways out. And last but not least, it is the duty of our organizations to recognize the restrictions and possibilities of the current law, to compare them with the actual level of knowledge and science and to figure out the differences. And of course, not only to figure them out, but to become active in changing the law in order to eliminate these differences. I would like to show you this uh, with a little example again from Switzerland. For the last years, years, uh, our organizations have worked a lot to explain the concept of shared parental authority in our country. As I said, this was not established as a standard until very recently. The work we did was very difficult and sometimes even annoying. We collected examples of real situations during our consulting work for parents affected by the consequences of separation and divorce. We focused, we focused on issues related to children. We did not involve ourselves into fights about money or other things. While helping these parents, we learned a lot about widespread opinions in courts and other official organizations. We started to realize where mistakes come from, where bad decisions usually happen, and also why they happen. Then we started to search for scientific evidence of the ideas we had developed. In the beginning, as I said, that was rather hard. But with time, more and more evidence was found that showed that what we were claiming was not completely wrong. So we turned back to the professionals, trying to explain them what we had learned from scientists. Sometimes they would listen to us. Many times they would not, unfortunately. So again we started to figure out what would have to be changed in the law in order to make sure that the scientific evidence would also flow into everyday decisions of professionals. When we talked about joint parental authority back in 2005, nobody would understand us. We were told that this was an illusion. We were told that living with the mother would always be the best for children. We were also told that the father's influence on children is very little, almost to be ignored. All this was by then, of course, backed up by the respective science work. But with time, new evidence was found, which helped us to back up our position as well. Suddenly, scientific results showed that fathers are important for children. Raising up children with women, with women alone was not the very best concept, and so on, and so on. We've always tried to be a trustworthy partner for professionals and, of course, for the affected people. Our goal was, and still is, to provide good solutions for individual situations by using the most modern evidence and knowledge. Today, we still explain the advantages of our concepts to the professionals. Today, most of them know what we are talking about. Most of them have accepted and learned that we might be right. Sometimes they are even thankful for some hints or tips that, would hide, that would, might help them out of difficult situations between two parents. We know a lot about the affected people as we have them in our advisory every day. We also know about the scientific evidence as we follow them intensively. But we also know about the restrictions and regulations professionals have to live with and we sometimes can help to explain this to our clients. So we are trying to fill the gap by bringing the two sides together, by filling the hole with know-how and information and by explaining our clients what can be and what can't be done. The new law on joint parental authority has brought Switzerland from the very rear end in Europe to a little bit ahead. Today, married parents will usually keep the parental authority when divorcing. Unmarried fathers can claim their authority very easily. The agreement of the mother is not necessary for that. Fathers and mothers can agree on joint custody, on shared parenting, though they are free to do so. Judges can even order mediation if they think it will help. A lot has changed 
as a result of the combined effort of science, civil organizations and clear-sighted politicians. And all of this and similar movements in many other countries has finally led it to this event today. In the purpose to bring science and professionals together, civil society organizations have started to work together long ago. It is a big satisfaction for all the people involved in this process that over the years more and more scientists and professionals could be one for this work. This finally led to the foundation of ICSP, an organization that unites all three parts, science, professions and civil organizations. As much as I am convinced that parent parentship can only be handled together, as much I am convinced that social and human progress can only be achieved together, we need the spirit of science, the profound experience of professionals, the driving need for change of civil organizations and of course the will and commitment of politics in order to achieve results that will lead to improve for our society. In an ideal world, a single change would probably take less than a generation. Our children deserve it that we correct system errors and mistakes in a way and time that they can profit from the improvement while still being children. This is why you and I are here today. We want to share knowledge and experience, discuss evidence and conclusions, create relations between each other and after all, find out together which concepts could work, which path could lead to improvements. Messieurs, dames, liberté, égalité, fraternité, ce sont trois mots qu'on apprend à l'école en Suisse. C'était le cri de guerre d'une révolution de la société contre une minorité. Mais ce sont aussi des mots très importants. Chacun et chacune doit avoir le droit de vivre en liberté. Chacun et chacune a le droit d'être traité égal, n'importe de quoi il s'agit. Chacun et chacune a le droit, mais aussi l'obligation, de faire partie dans l'amélioration de la société, ses lents, ses moyens. Pour avancer comme société, comme humaine même, il nous faut la fraternité, non seulement entre les frères, mais aussi entre frères et sœurs, entre humains. Il faut travailler ensemble pour arriver au but commun, comme dans les premiers jours devant la Bastille. Meine Damen und Herren, auch wenn Deutschland gerade besser Fußball spielt als Brasilien, so kann Deutschland sicher im Familienrecht von Brasilien lernen oder England von Frankreich oder die Schweiz von Schweden. Egal welche Sprache wir sprechen, egal welche Trikots wir tragen, wir alle wünschen uns für unsere Familien nur das Beste. Gemeinsam sind wir in der Lage, das zu erreichen und darum wünsche ich uns allen eine gute und fruchtbare Tagung. Dankeschön.